Hello everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com and supported by Visdolia, which is an AI study tool. At the end of this video, you will have practice session based on this topic via Visdolia. So in continuation with the autoimmune diseases, this is a part two of autoimmune disease series where we will understand the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases. So basically we will look into the pathogenesis, the general features of autoimmune diseases and we will see how autoimmune diseases can be classified. So if you recollect my earlier video on autoimmunity, we have learned in detail about self-tolerance, right? So basically, our body immune system is in equilibrium, you know, it's a balance between the lymphocyte activation and the mechanisms of tolerance. When I say lymphocyte activation, it's very important for the lymphocytes to be activated. Basically, it is about defense against pathogens, right? So the mechanisms of tolerance is to prevent reactions against self-antigens. So a body is in the equilibrium state between these two. So whenever there is imbalance or whenever there is a failure in the mechanisms of tolerance, that is when autoimmunity develops. So the question is, why does this tolerance fail? The reasons are one, inheritance of susceptibility genes, which basically breaks down the self tolerance mechanisms, and two, environmental triggers, which could be infections and tissue damage due to any cause. So, we'll talk about inheritance of susceptibility genes now. So, autoimmune diseases are complex multi genic disorders. Right. So, which means multiple genes are involved in the development of autoimmunity. Now, we need to understand that what is the proof that genetics contribute to autoimmunity? The answer is, if you see autoimmune diseases, the incidence of autoimmune disease is greater in twins of affected individuals. The incidence of autoimmune diseases is greater in monozygotic than the dizygotic twins. So, these are the proof that genetics contributes to autoimmunity. Now, what are the genes involved? We can classify the genes as association of HLA alleles, where we have learned about the association between various HLA genes and diseases, right? The most important one is association of HLA B27 and ankylosing spondylitis. The second one is DQA1, HLA DQA1 and celiac disease. The second important genes associate, set of genes associated are the association of non-MHC genes. For example, you know, PTPN double two gene polymorphisms is associated with rheumatoid arthritis. NOD2 gene polymorphisms is associated with Crohn's disease. And interleukin-2 receptor gene polymorphisms, we have learned about this in my uh, earlier session, right, which can lead to multiple sclerosis and various other autoimmune diseases. Now, coming back to the environmental triggers well, like infections and tissue damage, how does this contribute to autoimmunity? Let us see how it contributes. One, these environmental triggers may upregulate the expression of the co-stimulators on the antigen presenting cells, thereby resulting in you know, activation of the self-reactive lymphocytes and reaction towards various self-antigens. Second one is whenever there is infection, the microbes may express antigens which share the amino acid sequences with self antigens. Okay, and that's called molecular mimicry. The most important example, the most common example we uh, encounter in this scenario is rheumatic heart disease, where the streptococcal antigen it shares amino acid sequences with that of the cardiac muscle antigen, and that's why you know whenever you have a disease. Uh, with streptococci, there is a possibility of development of rheumatic heart disease. We'll talk about rheumatic heart disease when I discuss in detail in my cardiovascular disease section. The third important mechanism, for example, if you take the examples of Epstein-Barr virus and HIV, can result in polyclonal B cell activation where it leads to production of various autoantibodies. Fourth one is it may release, you know, the infections may release and structurally modify self-antigens and that is known as neo-antigen or development of neo-antigens. These are new antigens for which autoimmunity develop. And the last mechanism is increasing the production of various cytokines and these cytokines recruit lymphocytes which are self-reactive. So, this is how 
environmental triggers contribute to the development of autoimmunity or autoimmune diseases when we talk about autoimmune diseases it's very important to understand that there is a gender bias of autoimmunity which means autoimmune diseases are more common in women as compared to that of men the mechanisms are not really well understood but then the possible mechanism is that it may involve the effects of hormones on immune cells and various other factors the second one is infections you know we talked about infections causing autoimmune diseases right but then there is a paradoxical protection by infections in some animal models for example in type 1 diabetes mellitus multiple sclerosis and crohn's disease infections greatly reduce the incidence of disease again the mechanism is not really known but then possible you know mechanism could be that infection promotes very low level of interleukin 2 production okay and interleukin production two production helps in maintenance of regulatory t cells and you know that regulatory t cells are very important component for peripheral tolerance right and that's why there is protection from autoimmune diseases so, so this is a paradoxical protection by infections these are the two important things which you need to know whenever we talk about autoimmune diseases so let's move on to understand some general features of autoimmune diseases first and the foremost thing is that all autoimmune diseases are chronic sometimes there can be relapses and remissions very important to note that the damage is progressive you know the autoimmune response may itself promote further autoimmune attack let's understand this in more detail see for example if there is an autoimmune response we have we have studied that it results in tissue injury right and once there is tissue injury it results in exposure of the antigens which were previously hidden which were previously concealed and the epitopes of these antigens which are exposed right they are presented to the t cells which are self reactive and further leading on to more tissue injury and this mechanism or this process is referred to as epitope spreading and this epitope spreading is the reason for autoimmune diseases to be chronic or the chronicity of autoimmune diseases is basically by the concept of epitope spreading now the clinical and the pathologic manifestations of autoimmune diseases depends on the nature of underlying immune response that's very important to note that if the immune response is purely production of auto antibodies so what really happens is that this is associated with this regulated germinal center reactions which means to say that lots and lots of auto antibodies are being produced resulting in various autoimmune disease manifestations if the underlying immune response is abnormal and excessive t helper 1 and t helper 17 responses it leads to chronic inflammatory diseases like psoriasis multiple sclerosis inflammatory bowel disease etc sometimes both antibodies auto antibodies and t cell mediated inflammation result for example the most common example which we can quote here is rheumatoid arthritis last part of this session is to understand the categories of autoimmune diseases which we have seen earlier as it can be classified into organ specific disease and systemic disease one thing to note about systemic diseases is that it tends to involve the blood vessels and the connective tissue and that is the reason these are referred to as collagen vascular diseases collagen meaning the connective tissue involvement vascular blood vessels right so these are referred to as collagen vascular diseases or connective tissue diseases so now let's see what are all the various autoimmune diseases under organ specific disease and systemic autoimmune diseases the first mechanism let us see which is mediated by antibodies or auto antibodies so we will see firstly the organ specific disease the first example is autoimmune hemolytic anemia where the antibodies you know they target and destroy red blood cells autoimmune thrombocytopenia where the antibodies target and destroy platelets autoimmune atrophic gastritis of pernicious anemia where the antibodies damage the lining of the gastric mucosa leading on to vitamin b12 deficiency we have studied about myasthenia gravis in my earlier sessions right where there are antibodies against the receptor muscle receptor sites you have good pasteur syndrome where the antibodies attack the lungs and the kidneys right and when we talk about systemic autoimmune disease which are mediated by antibodies the commonest example which you have to remember is systemic lupus erythematosus 
this is an autoimmune disease where the antibodies form immune complexes which deposits in various tissues causing inflammation. From my next session onwards, I will talk in detail about systemic lupus erythematosus. Next one is ANCA associated vasculitis. Anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies associated vasculitis. As the name says, they, these are the antibodies which target the neutrophils which damage blood vessel walls. The second one is the autoimmune diseases which are mediated by T cells. Let's look into the organ specific diseases. The examples are the type 1 diabetes mellitus where the T cells attack and destroy insulin producing beta cells of pancreas. The second one is multiple sclerosis where the T cells attack the myelin sheath of central nervous system which impairs nerve function. And the systemic ones are the rheumatoid arthritis where the T cells damage joints. Systemic sclerosis where the T cells target what? They target the connective tissues leading to skin and organ fibrosis. Zogren syndrome where the T cells destroy the glands that produces saliva leading on to dryness or dry mouth, right? The third category is the diseases which are postulated to be autoimmune. Organ specific diseases include inflammatory bowel disease where the mechanism is suspected immune response against intestinal content. Second one is primary biliary cirrhosis where the immune cells attack the bile ducts. The third one is autoimmune hepatitis which means there is uh, immune system reaction against the hepatocytes causing autoimmune hepatitis. We'll, we will discuss each of these entities in my subsequent sessions. The systemic one which is postulated to be autoimmune is polyarteritis nodosa where there is suspected immune cell infiltrations of the blood vessel walls leading on to inflammation and necrosis. So, these are some of the autoimmune diseases which you need to know. So, that is all about the pathogenesis, the general features and classification of autoimmune diseases. Now, it's time for you to understand the concepts more by the process of active learning via Wisdolia, where you can you know, attempt the multiple choice questions, short answers and various clinical scenarios. All you have to do is just click on the link below in the description as well as in the pinned comment so that you can attempt these questions and that will make your learning more effective and you also get instant feedback if you go wrong in any of these questions. It's fun to learn. Don't forget to click on the link for the practice session via Wisdolia. Thank you for watching. If you have liked this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have any queries. If you feel this video useful, do consider subscribing and sharing to your friends. Thank you.